space that has been really, really big. Perhaps you can speak to us a little bit about that. It is really a sad day that we wake up this morning to the news that Don Lindbergh has passed on. Don, uh, Des and Don are like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, are like Kaifa Semenya and Leta Mbuli, are those kind of couples that work together within the industry. For a long time, they worked and they were very successful white performers in a white South Africa. But then the 60s and the 70s, they took the risk of giving that up, cross the line, come to the people they identified, their vision for a future South Africa. And then they started to work with black artists in Johannesburg, mm -hmm. among them Abigail Kubalo, Kubeka, Maralo, Koketlote Limaje, we used to call him Two Bull, Siam, and many, many others. Their work was so respected and the work they did as the duo. I mean, the thing that they directed and produced so many plays, and one of them being Godspell. And that was banned in South Africa because it was a mixed cast, the story of Jesus Christ. They didn't give up. They went to open the play in Maseru. He had a great successful run. They came back and did the first Black Mikado, which was performed at Soweto's National Theatre, which I call the Orlando, the DOCC Hall, the home of Gibson Kende. So we've had this relationship. I met them in 1973, coming from Port Elizabeth to Johannesburg mm -hmm. with Winston John, together with many men, um, Barney Simon, Athol Fugard, um, uh, Ian Bernhard, Lionel Gluckman. And there was a group of these whites that worked with the groups from the United Artists in Dorkey House. They immediately took over the marketing of the play because it could not be marketed through any media. It only could be done by word of mouth. And we played to solid full houses. Mm -hmm. We continued our relationship. And then at the end of the Vita Awards, there was a gap in Gauteng, actually in South Africa. There was no awards that would celebrate and recognize excellence within the theater and in the arts. That's when Des and Don came up with the idea of the Naledi Awards, not only to recognize, but to promote the arts. Awards are critical. You'll never grow until you win a Tony Award, until you win a Grammy Award, mm -hmm. you need an OB, you need an Oscar, because these awards set up your level of excellence, set up your level as an actor and as a performing artist, which then results in other producers, other filmmakers in other countries saying, I'd like to work with that award-winning actor. They have honored a myriad of South African actors and writers, including people backstage where they would honor a stage manager. It has been an incredible journey. And every time we met, we talked about the Naledi, passionate about it, mm. driven about it, struggling to raise funds to make this event to happen every year. She worked together with her husband 365 days to make one day, one day, the greatest night where artists could dress up in long dresses, in tuxedo suits, ladies saying, I'm being dressed by so-and-so, I'm dressed by so-and-so. That was the incredible evening that was a gift from them. I'm now worried, I'm shuddering in my heart, what's going to happen? But I know that Homutsa Christopher, I know that Meshe Maponya, Selomake Kangube, who are part of that board, including Des Lindbergh, they will carry that torch and they will move with this great work that this lady has left behind. Mr. Gani, from what you've just said, it, it sounds to me like there was a lot of collaboration and a lot of bringing the industry together um, that Dawn w has played alongside her husband, especially for those in the theatre space. Absolutely. She won you immediately. She put together a groups of people immediately. We worked together, all of us, the market theatre, the state theatre in Pretoria, recognising Aubrey Sechabe's Marikana, controversial work, provocative work. She was there to promote that. We were, they represented the Naledi in such a way they become reputable even abroad. Even now, when you put in your CV biography, when a film from Hollywood, from London, from everywhere wants to know what you've done, they do recognize the Dina Lady Awards. They know that these are the top awards in Southern Africa. They know that. And these awards were created by a group of people 
You know, the panelists who saw every play, who saw community work, Don and Des would go to Shawelo, would go to 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 to, to, to Boxburg, to Jemistin, Guatemala, would go to Ferenichen to go and see the work so that the work would be evaluated chosen and award given, including young groups of students, including uh, uh, children's theater. It was a massive operation, which she ran single-handedly with a group around her. That, but she was like that burning spirit. She was the one that kept the flame going. Even when things look like it's not happening this year, they haven't raised the money to do the Naledis. Mm. Dawn never gave up. Oh. I mean, it hurt so much. Mm. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I'm just saying it hurts so much mm. to lose such a person. I mean, for us to be in the 70s and the 80s in the struggle, it was okay. We were fighting a different battle. We were fighting for something. But for a white person like Don and Des, like Arthur Fugat, Bunny Simon, many men, and Ian Bernhardt, people who are white privileged, to give that up and come to this side, risk their lives, risk their livelihood, be on the side in the eye of the security police. It wasn't a simple thing that must be explained that, oh no, they joined and worked with us. There were risk entailed and involved. And this is where Des and Don excelled with those two young little boys next to them that called me uncle, I mean, David and Josh. They grew up following us. They grew up calling us uncle. They grew up with us around that family. That whole family was part of the arts fraternity. It gives us great sadness to lose such a great lady at this time. I don't want to go back to Mary Twala, to Nom Tlenkwenyin, who were honored by the Naledi Awards for a Lifetime Achievement Award. I don't want to talk about us and the Handspring Puppet, who and the Few Guards and the Peter Deck Ace, who were honored for the international impact. She was she knew exactly, and the Naledi committee and the organization knew what they were doing, promoting excellence in the arts, promoting the development and growth of the arts. We've lost that kind of person who had that burning spirit, who took it upon herself as a mission to achieve every year. Of course, this loss also comes at a time where, um, you know, the world is reeling from COVID-19 and theater hasn't been exempt, you know, People are having to reinvent different ways of doing things in order to keep audiences, but I think in also also just to to keep the energy alive. What does this loss mean in this current climate? And you know, when you look at the future of of theatre, look, we all were touched by this COVID nineteen. Two weeks ago, my sister goes for a normal checkup in Port Elizabeth in a hospital comes home, there's nothing wrong. Two weeks later, she's dead. And I went to Port Elizabeth and buried her. In the meantime, we are working through Zooming, Webinar, uh, Microsoft Team, every way we can through this, the, to, to, the, so, to the media. I mean, to virtual reading lines, doing performances. I've done three productions already virtually with the Royal Shakespeare Company. I'm doing a podcast with the, uh, uh, the, the National Theatre with the BBC. We do this work. This is interim because it does not replace the fever, the passion, the presence, the urgency of being in a theatre. We are all sitting here really hit hard because the public gathering limitation, the super spreading hot spots hit the arts in a very, very serious way. Recording musicians who cannot sing in concerts where they make their money Individual artists who used to sing in clubs, in hotels, cannot. Actors who have to go to the theaters, rehearse a play, produce it, cannot. Even when you start with Bex, I mean, on television, doing soapy, and suddenly one person is, is, um, is, is, is test positive, the production is closed. The extra sanitation and the PPEs and everything that is impossible for actors in the township, theater producers in the township, they have almost been left out of the picture. We don't know what's going to happen. I'm completing to the private sector, the public sector, to look into the plight of the artists, not just saying that we're not a 350 rand UAI little post office pickup thing. We had been doing this as an industry that contributes almost 1.9 billion rand annually 
into the GDP of this country. So we need a, a different approach to revisit the whole industry, to formalize it so that as practitioners, we work, we've got pension, we've got provident fund, we've got medical aid, we've got bills to pay. Everybody's been struggling, trying to hustle with whom they own to say maybe things will be better, maybe this is going to be, but we continue to declare national disaster to the middle of January. That means we can't work until the middle of January. Mm -hmm. And this is where artists are suffering in an incredible way. So fewer of us are beginning to get a little bit there, but the majority of artists have been hit hard by COVID-19. We hope that we will be considered when we talk about $500 billion that is being injected to keep certain institutions, certain small business companies alive, that we're part of that list to look at how do we rejuvenate the industry? How do we pump it up so that we can survive at the moment we're hustling between saying, I can't pay you this month, I can't pay you this month. I don't know how many artists have been threatened with eviction, repossessions, and generally not being able to look after their own families. This has been hard, much harder on performing artists. Dr. John Kani, let me thank you so much for your time on News at Prime this evening, really giving us a, a sense of the full spectrum of not just Nalid uh, Dawn Lindbergh, but I think the impact that COVID-19 has had on the arts and certainly condolences to you and your family on the loss of your sister. Mark Lewis is standing by. He'll have a final look at your sport tonight.